Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're doing Bree. Uh, this is Bree support, not tank or thorns or anything like this, because uh, currently the the best, most popular, uh, or the most efficient use of Bree is as a, a support to give resources to the team and to just churn through her deck very fast, very well, that sort of thing. Uh, if you like what you see, please let me know uh, via the comments. I like to hear feedback on what you like, what you didn't like, what uh, you expect or hope to see in the future, that kind of stuff. Uh, praise goes a and compliments go a long way with me in keeping me motivated to keep this content rolling. So with Bree, the passive is at the beginning of the comic gain five thorns. That means absolutely nothing to us in this build, unfortunately. So uh, that's uh, for a different build, and that's this whole left side here is about uh, thorns and crack and stuff like that. None of that's going to be applicable to us. We're just going to go down this right side, and unfortunately, the passive does not help us. So at level two, we get defensive strategy. This basically says one energy, draw three cards. That is the most efficient part of it for us. It also happens to say, by the way, your team gets tons of block, which is really cool. And uh, if you don't use it, burn through it all in one turn, uh, you can have extra 15% resistances for a round. Uh, usually, though, if I'm picking up, if I if I draw a defensive strategy, I'm going to consume it all in one turn, give my entire team, you know, 40, 50 block and uh, also be drawing three cards. This is kind of the card we were looking to dig for every time. And we want to get this turn one as often as possible, and we're going to try to build around doing so. Next level three, we have Tactician. Uh, beginning of your turn, skills cost one less. Well, so these cards have to be in your hand to begin with. And this basically says uh, every turn gains zero to ten energy. Uh, so <laughs> the more cards you start in your hand, the... Uh, the more benefit you'll get from this. We really don't need too much benefit from this. We're only looking to get at least one or um, two or three cards discounted. Uh, if we get that much discounted a turn, we're going to be uh, rolling in the energy to be able to play some really big spells and powerful effects with that extra energy that we've saved up. So this basically uh, encourages us to play more skill cards because any that start in our hand costs one less. And uh, it gets uh, pretty powerful pretty fast. So lots of energy for us. Next is Command and Conquer. Of all of them, this is actually the one that overlaps the most with all of her other cards. Uh, Bree already has a starting card that gives Powerful to the team. Uh, Command and Conquer says plus Powerful Charges and give Powerful to the team for the next four skills. Uh, the, the team also heals some. They also get some Mitigate, some Vitality. So there's a lot of like weird things going on for Command and Conquer. Uh, they're all nice things, don't get me wrong. But Bree normally doesn't need this. Like This is just helping effects that she's already doing successfully enough without it. Uh, so if you were to cut a talent card, this is actually the one I would cut. It looks nice, it's pretty, but in practice, it's not giving me anything that I don't already have elsewhere. Uh, because the... Yeah, just, just the play pattern of this. It's not a skill. It is an enchantment. It costs one energy. Uh, there's a lot of things... That a lot of little things add up to be like, eh, this is an okay card. It looks pretty. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. It is very powerful, but it's turns out we're powerful enough without it. So just keep that in mind. Like, look at this card. It's really nice. And yet I'm going to suggest cutting it. You know, if if once you start getting used to Bree, you're going to start cutting this card. And then last but not least, Tireless just says, hey, we start with one extra energy. Um, which is basically just a, a worse version of Tactician for us. Uh, like, instead of 0 to 10, it's just 1. So, it is what it is. Biggest thing here is level 2 defensive strategy. So, uh, between level 2 and 3, once we get to those, we are full power on Bree when it comes to talents and level ups. Which is very nice for a support to have. We don't want our supports to be relying on their level 4, level 5 talents. We want them to be effective members of the team in Acts 1 and 2. Um, so that uh, where our other team members need more help and support. So speaking of Act 1, let's look at the starting deck. So, pull up my other starting deck here. What we've done is basically removed Sneeze. Basically removed all of the expensive Thorn and... Um, you, if you look at the starting deck, we just moved everything that costs 2 plus other than this Battle Shout. This is really the only card that we want to keep around. The spike shields, we don't plan on blocking. We don't need thorns. And then big rating blows, we don't need an inefficient damage attack. 
we are looking for uh, as much skills and AOE buffs for the team and debuffs for the enemies as possible. So when you're building up Bree in the starting town, you're basically going to say, hey, I want Vulnerable. So you're going to pick up more Intimidates. She starts with two. We're going to add two more. And then we're also going to pick up the Piercing Howl. Then we also want to get as much Inspire as possible. So that's going to be two Helping Hands. And uh, yeah, that pretty much fills out all the things we can get in Act 1. There's really not too many... Um, too many options in the the starting town um we also i guess pick up the sunder armor because we're looking for more things to do we're trying to cut out these pommels and these intercepts because we basically have five dead cards in this deck because we're not going to get any perks to help this block this is going to be a very weak card for us and we don't really need to be doing damage we're not going to be increasing our damage output in any way so what we're really looking for are to eventually get some of these cards that uh, draw themselves so in, in later acts in act two and three we're gonna get the battle plans and um and such here in act one if you really want to spend extra resources remember this this guide is meant as a, a baseline if you have more resources than i have spend more if you have less spend less uh this setup i've actually spent very res respectably little on brie i think the biggest splurge i spent was a sunder armor piercing howl is basically guaranteed like piercing howls and intimidates you should always be getting and that's very cheap to pick up, and then the Helping Hands as well. The Sunder Armor was just kind of a splurge, and if you do pick up the Sunder Armor, you can also pick up a blue Change Weapon. And what happens with that is this, since Change Weapon draws two cards out of your deck and discards one, it's replacing itself. And it's also, since it's discarding a melee, it's guaranteed to pick up one of these Pommels that you don't like and discard it for you, which helps thin your deck. So this is really good for thinning your deck, uh, guaranteeing that you're... Um, you turn two, you turn three are more uh, efficient and uh, consistent because these pommels are, are dead cards to us and so are these intercepts. So if I had more cards to add to the deck, I would, but there really just aren't that many efficient ones you can get in Act 1 for our game plan. And remember, our game plan is buffing our teammates and debuffing the enemies. So if I could craft more Piercing Howls, I would. If I can craft more Helping Hands, I would, but I can't. So this is what we got. You could, I guess, craft another Shout. Actually, that starts baseline rare. No, that starts as baseline rare. So I'm not going to recommend any rares because you can't craft those at uh, base 8 madness. Um, and uh, yeah, this is what we got. Let's see. So cut expensive stuff. Brought in nice pretty stuff. Not really much else to talk about this. Oh, uh, Intimidates. The reason I have them two different colors here is because it is worth considering upgrading them to the blue Intimidate. Because you don't have, you can see my average energy cost is pretty low here. But the problem with that is, yes, it adds one to everything, which is nice. But it might put you in a weird position where you draw a couple blue Intimidates and you draw a Battle Shout or you draw a Sunder Armor. And in that case, you can't play everything all at once. Uh, if you're not rocking the Sunder Armor and you're running just the other Intercept here that I cut, then I would say upgrade a bunch of these Intimidates to blue so you have a little more... Uh, energy you can spend you're not really counting these pommels as spent so this this cost is even lower than it looks but you just don't want to be stuck with a battle shout and four blue intimidates and not be able to play them all so if you're going to upgrade some i'd recommend just upgrading one or two of these to the blue version and uh keeping some just white or the yellow so that you're not stuck unable to play all the cards in your hand because that's uh, you you basically don't draw the card if you don't spend it the the, the turn that you draw it. So we want to make sure we're efficient with all of our plays. Uh, I think that's it for starting items. Let's go look at perks from Bree. So Bree offers a lot with with four Intimidates uh, in the starting deck. You're, you're going to be playing into that a lot. Bree offers a lot of Sight and a lot of Mark. And with that, uh, depending on who you're supporting, like Sylvie relies on Sight, Nez relies on Sight, uh, Andrin relies on Mark, Grookly relies on Mark. So depending on what your team comp is, you're going to pick up one of these nodes down here. If you're supporting someone that does slashing damage, you're going to pick up this uh, this Mark to reduce slashing. If you're supporting someone that relies on sight, you're going to pick up extra sight charges. Uh, you are applying speed to yourself with your starting item, and also eventually in the later game, you're going to be getting a plus speed of the team card. So you're going to want uh, plus fast charges. You're also going to be doing the howls throughout the entire game, so you're going to want plus slow charges. Uh, Bree, want, you want her to be one of the first people on the team since she has a decent amount of speed manipulation, so you're going to want all the speed charges here. And uh, 
yeah, then sharp is another thing that Bree can do. We're not going to have it here in the opening deck, but in the later acts, uh, you'll be able to apply sharp to your teammates. So you're going to want at least this sharp charge. And if you have the spare resources and your team needs it, uh, you can also do the sharp does not decay and cannot be purged for your team. Right now on this team, I have Gustav picking it up, but Bree is a very likely candidate to pick this up for a sharp team as well. Bree, of course, is going to get plus vulnerable charges because you have the Howls, and later we're going to be adding a Carnage to add more vulnerable. Powerful. Bree starts with a powerful card, and later we'll get a couple from the Talents. So you're going to want both of these plus powerful charges. If you can't afford the second one, that's fine because it costs three extra points. Definitely pick up this first one because it only costs one. Uh, I... If you, you're going to, once you're fully built out, you should have extra points lying around. Um, I would recommend picking, trying this up. If you have the math to do it, otherwise you can adjust accordingly. But, uh, yep. You want to start with an extra card in your first turn, as everyone does. This is, a, in the current state of the game, everyone just picks up this plus card at the start of the game. Like, there's very little reason to say no to that. And then last but not least, we do apply Vitality. Uh, with the Shout, and eventually later with some Talent cards or some other big splashy cards. Uh, so you're going to want this plus Vitality Charges. There aren't very many good uh, team-oriented Vitality perks. If you are going to pick up one, it's this far-right one saying Increased Mind Resistances. That should be it for perks. It's kind of quick and dirty, but Bree, you just got to make sure you're adjusting for your team. Sight for sight teams, mark for mark teams, that kind of thing. Always doing powerful, sometimes sharp. And, uh, yeah, it just depends on who your team is. In this case, Andrin. So I'd be picking up the, the plus mark. I would be, I don't need the sight, so I ditch that. And, uh, I need the sharp, so I'd pick up the sharp. Uh, yep, let's move on to Act 2. So, in the Act 2 deck list, Bree has, I picked up another Intimidate and another Helping Hand through, uh, Combat Rewards. I've made sure these Helping Hands, um, so in Act 1, the Shackle is pretty nice. Uh, in Act 2, you still kind of need the Shackles. And eventually in Act 4, you're going to want the uh, the Insane Dispels. But just kind of keep an eye on these and switch them as needed throughout the the the, uh, the Acts. Also picked up Defensive Strategy, which is our big ticket item. And I've added Sharpen, because this is a Sharp team. So uh, you have to pick the version that says Hero. You do not want the Self. You do not want the Self. Uh, honestly, depending on where you're at in the act, you might not like, and you're offered this as a quest reward, uh, I mean, as a combat reward, you might pick up one of these versions that's not the yellow, and it'll be a dead card in your hand until you can get to town and change it back to the yellow version. Uh, because unfortunately, these other two don't do anything for you at all. It's only the yellow that helps you um, as a support here for Andrin or whatever other sharp player you're playing with. Um, things that we could be adding, but I, I'm not going to add until Act 3 or 4 on most of my runs because I can't afford the shards. Uh, you do not need the bluff. You are drawing through your deck plenty fine. You don't need this draw card. But this Enrage is very nice. We'll talk a little more about it later. You could be picking up this Enrage or the Battle Plan. Oh, I already have the Battle Plan. Uh, I think I lucked in. I did craft it. Yep, it was important enough to craft. Uh, I normally wouldn't necessarily be able to afford the upgraded version by Act 2, but I did spend a little extra for this video to talk about the fact that with Battle Plan, we want it to start in our opening hand. Because remember, skills in our hand cost one less. So this basically reads, in the opening hand, cost zero, draw three, put back two. Oh, and by the way, we get one energy in the following turn. So and this is a fantastic card. And it pairs very well with defensive strategy. Because once we have defensive strategy and we have the innate Battle Plan, we're basically, our opening hand is three cards deeper. So we have a much higher chance of being able to get defensive strategy in our opening gambit. And with that, you're also going to itemize. I have a really nice pickup here for the whenever I play a skill draw card. So my goal is to draw as many cards as possible, find that defensive strategy, and then draw the rest of my deck. Um, so I have a pretty high chance of going through my entire deck on the first turn, which is a pretty big deal. Also, side note, Wolfskin Cloak, I might forget to mention in the items. Really good pickup, guaranteed from Act 1 from Yager, so uh, just adds another howl to your deck. But with your deck, because I can draw my entire deck on turn 1, so if uh, I have an item or two that allows me to draw cards, and I have the battle plan, that gets me 
eight deep, plus the plus one from your starting thing, so that's nine deep, plus defensive strategy says draw three more, so 10, 11, 12. I'm basically playing all but three of my cards on my first turn, which uh, is why everything here costs zero and or two. We did bring Battle Shout down to two. Uh, the, you lose the Vitality on the two cost version, so depending on if your team needs the Vitality or not, you're going to do the two or the three. The three is perfectly playable, but... Uh, there's sometimes that when I have the three cost version, I can't play it and everything else. So the two cost just allows me to guarantee that powerful for my team. Uh, but losing out on the, the vitality is a big deal. So um, so I'm playing all but like two or three cards in my deck. So that means that on my second and third turn, I have I might draw my entire deck again and only have like three or four cards left. So you got to be really careful making sure that your entire deck doesn't vanish. Because all these Intimidates say vanish. The helping hands do not, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six cards that don't vanish, and one of them says draw three. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm basically guaranteed to draw the same cards every turn, turn two and on. And right now for this, that's going to be th three helping hands, a sharpen, and a shout, which is why I have the shout at two, so that I can sharpen and shout with the three energy I get every turn. Uh, don't forget though that if you draw if you draw any of these, you'll get uh, the discount of one, and the battle plan is producing energize as well. So I guess really I could be at this this particular deck I could probably be running three, not a problem, uh, and I might even be ending up with extra energy. And we'll talk about it more in the Act Four deck list. But eventually Bree is going to be in this position where on turns three and four you have lots of extra energy and you don't have anything to do with it. Uh, which is fine, because the first turn is the most important turn, uh, but eventually we'll start filling our deck with a couple cards that we can dump that energy into, and I'll show you that in the Act 4, but just keep that in mind, because the transition from like this Act 2 deck list to the Act 4 deck list, there might be a couple turns or fights or, or whatnot where you're like, man, I have so much extra energy. That's okay, because in Act 4 we'll add some more expensive stuff. Let's go look at items. So, in the items, we want... What is this? Draw Inspire. We want, actually, a very unique card here. Fountain Pen. This is best card for Bree, <laughs> because that Battle Plans is a book. And it starts in our opening hand, and it doesn't vanish. And it's a skill. It's just, there's so much synergy between Fountain Pen and Bree, at least in this support build. Uh, this is the end-all be-all of awesome. If you can't get it to it, Quill Sign as well. Otherwise, we're just looking for other ways to draw. There are a bunch of stuff that have to do with weapons and spells, which we don't really have any. You might uh, get something that says draw on a melee attack, because we will eventually be adding a carnage. Uh, you can do a draw on a defense, because we will be adding a push forward, which is a defense and a skill. Very nice energy there. And then, of course, the whenever you play a skill is uh, a no-brainer for Bree, and the endless bag is a nice pickup just because we will be emptying our hand fairly fast although since our deck is going to get so small we'll be drawing through our deck so often that we will be getting uh, exhaust on the cards and the cost will go up and up so the endless bag is actually less powerful than the proficient i'd rather have this baseline proficient than this uh corrupted endless bag honestly which is a weird thing to say but we're drawing through our deck so efficiently that uh, the proficient is just fine and uh yeah i can't think of anything else we want items wise oh speed we want f things that do fast and slow so we're not healing people so this doesn't do anything we want items that make us go faster because if uh our starting item is a our starting item here i've already replaced it the starting item for brie is equivalent to these slippers but from the accessory slot saying, hey, combat start, gain speed. Fast, I mean. Uh, but we're going to replace that because there's a lot of good accessories for Bree. So the slippers or the cloak of speed are a nice pickup to replace it. Uh, and then, of course, forest crown, if you're going to the dryad and or anything that says speed or fast charges. Here it is, forest banner. This is what uh, she starts with, combat start, gain fast. Uh, but we're going to replace it with things like the matriarch's claw or the proficient or golden laurel if you look into that you know stuff like that i should cover it for items let's go to act four in act four we'll talk about some cards 
and then I'll actually show you a combat. Bree decklist. So this, uh, you can see I've lost a lot of Intimidates. Uh, it's okay to keep some of the Intimidates and cut some of these other cards. Uh, I mentioned possibly cutting co Command and Conquer. I would say play a couple games with Command and Conquer and pay attention to whether or not it's helping your team at all. It is a heal, and it does add Mitigate, um, which is a, a, a powerful effect, but it's not a skill. It's uh, Try it and see. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to say cut it, because I don't cut it all the time, but I'm I'm never regret cutting it when I do, if that makes any sense. Uh, and then we we still have this battle plan. You definitely want the innate battle plan. Uh, the grinding wheel. If you are running sharp, I've upgraded that sharpen to a grinding wheel. One because it vanishing is actually pretty nice. Uh, if you need a non-vanish version because your DPS can't maintain sharp on themselves, it's okay to keep the sharpen in the deck. The uh, the sharpen, the yellow sharpen, that's okay to keep. And you can just run the sharpen and the grinding wheel, that's fine. The grinding wheel is really nice because this is one of those uh, energy dumps I was talking about. Where, because we've got all these super cheap cards and all these cost reductions and card draw and we're going through our deck really fast. The grinding wheel basically says, you know, add, add 12 sharp for 3 energy, add 12 sharp to Andrin or whatever. So, it's a good place to spend our energy. Still running the howls. Still running our, our standard. Uh, this this card will stick with us for the whole time just because it's a one cost inspire all. Uh, there's there's no downside to this. Um, I wouldn't necessarily. It's it's kind of like command and conquer though that sometimes it's like maybe I don't need all those effects, uh, and you just need to start you start struggling with free to find cards that you want to keep in your deck because you're running through a foe so fast and so many of them are vanishing. So some of the non vanishing cards we're adding are carnage. We're adding this because it's a vulnerable applicator. A plier um and it helps get rid of buffer on the archon and this sense that we are talking act four you have to start worrying about archon so you don't really need the carnage until archon fight but this is your last chance to craft it so i would recommend uh if you don't have it pick it up it clears the buffer and it applies the vulnerable because if you notice all of our other vulnerable appliers vanish and we've actually cut a lot of our vulnerable appliers already so this is kind of needed to help uh fill in that gap Push forward is a fantastic speed manipulation for Bree. Uh, we don't have any block charges from our perks, but it's still an okay amount of block. It's mainly just the 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 basically one energy fast three to the team that it's here for. Uh, and especially in Archon fight, you're going to be getting slowed down by passing the hot potato around. And push forward helps clear those stacks and help you get faster and stay ahead of the Archon on key turns that you need to. Keep in Battle Shout because it's a, a maintainable version of Powerful, and Bree is supporting Scouts and Warriors. If she's supporting a Warrior, they, uh, they'll they be able to get to a high Powerful stacks, but not be able to maintain it. And if she's helping uh, Scouts, some of them can maintain it and some can't. So uh, it's really just here for the Powerful for the team. And we can upgrade it to the 3 cost and now add Vitality every round. That's also helped for the sustain on, like, say, an Archon fight, Archon fight or Long Fights. Uh, just being able to add vitality to the team every round is nice. Which was one thing I forgot to mention in items. If you are running Battle Shout and you are running the 3-cost version, uh, some of the rings that add vitality charges go a long way to helping the, the survival of your team. And then another big payoff card. You don't need the corrupted version to play it. Uh, you can definitely play the blue version and maybe even the yellow. I recommend the blue though because 7 energy is hard to get by 9 is so much harder. But since Bree is so cheap and efficient and the way these enrages are play out, I'll talk about those in a second. You just you will very consistently be able to play these seven and nine cost cards. There aren't many that are effective uh, for for the team. Citadel, I would say, is one of the few uh, mythic level high cost cards that can actually have a payout for a support on the team. Uh, enrage. So. Enrage, if it's in your starting hand, says pay zero, draw a card, gain two energy, which puts it by far and away the strongest card in the game. Uh, so the more enrages you have in the deck, uh, th the more you start running into the problem of too much energy on Bree, because for everyone in your starting hand, it just it gets crazy really fast. I mean, because even with, without the discount, this is just a fantastic card that you're not going to you're going to keep playing as many copies as you can. 
but since you have that discount on skills that start in your hand, it just it compounds to a very, very powerful card. Uh, let's see. That should cover everything for Bree. Let's go uh, take a look at the Act 4 fight. Hopefully I uh, did the right one here. Oh, I think I was supposed to go to the top one. Oh, well, doesn't matter. We'll see what happens. I just like to practice the fight so I know what's coming, so I don't surprise you guys with anything weird or crazy that I can't... Uh, I don't do well with change, what can I say? All right, so I'm going to breeze through the other players' turns because uh, we don't really need to see those in action. If you want to see these other guys in action, go ahead and check out their videos because there should be a bunch of those lying around now. Uh, pardon me. I have to think through these things. So, Gustav. If Normally, if you don't have Gustav on the team, Bree will be going first. And also, usually, either Gustav or Bree will have the ones with all these uh, this fast equipment. So, if Bree is the fastest and the speed manipulator on your team, then you're going to have all the fast item on Bree. And you'd expect to have Bree go first, not the frog. But uh, that was not the case here. And honestly, you got to be careful with that starting item. Her starting item that says plus fast. A lot of people rely on that and expect Bree to be a super fast character because of it. But as you can see on this team, Bree is one of my slowest characters. And that's because Andrin does not have any of his speed perks. Andrin has zero speed perks. That's the only way that Bree can stay caught up with Andrin without um, some sort of item support. So uh, don't get... Be very careful when you replace her starting accessory because that drastically affects how slow or fast she is in relative to the rest of your team. Alright, so in this team, the robot does a lot of the vulnerable. Uh, so Bree kind of steps away from it. But that's usually Bree's job if she is the solo support and you don't have a, a heavy vulnerable stacker like uh, the robot. But so, yep, I was supposed to go to the one above here. So I have two draws from the Proficient. So let's see if we can draw into my, my powerful cards here. So I'm not going to do the battle plan first because this puts cards back on top of my deck. So this wants to be my last card draw. So I'm going to do the Howl first. Draw me a card. Okay, nice. Going to do the Stand Bear. Draw me a card. Did not get the... Uh, we're still looking for this defensive strategy. We might still get there. Battle plan. There's defensive strategy and there's enrage. So when you put cards back with battle plan, be careful to not put back these ones that are green and have their cost already reduced because you'll lose that cost reduction by putting it back on top of the deck. So defensive strategy and enrage. And I now I still have two more draws with defensive strategy. So Le Howl, Le Helping Hand, Helping Hand. So now I've added Three inspired to Andrin this turn. I've given him four powerful. I could give him six more. Andrin doesn't really need more powerful because I believe he has... He's got the Lava Crystal and he's got a trait given to, to him already. So I don't have to play the Battle Shout this turn. But I will probably play the Grinding Will and Intimidate. But you see I have all sorts of options. Um, if I had drawn cards in a different order and not spent so much energy, I might be able to play the Citadel this turn. On my other video, on the other... Other, other combat I would have been able to. I just I buggered which one I went to. Um, where are we at here? So I want to... I'm just going to Grinding Wheel and give him lots of sharp because I can. Because my plan is to kill all these guys in one fell swoop. So I need to put Vulnerable here. And you see I went through... I've only got two cards left in my drop pile. And I've only got a few left in my discard. And these are just the non-vanishing ones. Uh... The only one I didn't play was Citadel because it is a monstrous card and you do have to actively plan to play it. Uh, but next turn, Bree will have four. And depending on what I play, I can save up for a future turn. Also don't have many enrages in her deck yet. And uh, yeah, let's uh, just finish off with Andrin because this is where Bree shines. Yes, Bree did a lot of things and you don't see the payoff until your damage dealer takes their turn. I would like to kill some things. 
five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do, 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 do. And, uh, yeah, that's, um, three churn into a deck. And Act 4, you start to pick up more Enrages. So that's why I'm perfectly fine having picked up that Citadel before now and not playing it necessarily on turn one. But not playing Citadel turn one, I mean, that's a pretty normal thing to begin with. But the fact that I have an option to play it sometimes if I draw in the correct order and have enough discounts with uh, skill cards starting in my, my deck, my hand, I mean. And then also just the more Enrages you pick up as you go throughout the... Uh, the the act the more likely you'll play that on turn one and have done everything else that you saw me do uh that should be it for the brie let's talk about how to unlock and then team comps so with the unlocks oh we forgot to talk about pets before we get that let's talk about pets so part of the item discussion brie equipment i have asmodee i'd say the two best pets for brie are going to be asmodee uh, if you're doing a Mark team, and Oculi if you're doing a Sight team. Because Oculi says Super Sight to everyone, and Bree can pick up the Sight talents, and then Bree would be picking up some necklaces. Uh, if you're going that route, you'd go with um, some, some Sight earrings to increase the Sight charges. And like I said earlier, if you're going the Vitality Shout, you'll pick up the Vitality Rings to add Vitality charges. So because you're support and you're not relying on having to deal damage, you have a lot of options for what equipment you can pick up depending on what game plan you have. So in this this one, I want uh, I want Asmodee on the team. Bree is a good choice for it because Asmodee has the slow and mark. Uh, if I didn't have Gustav already using Oculi and I was doing a sight team, and then I could have Bree doing this just because the increased sight charges and it strips buffer really well. So. For Bree as a support, Ocular Asmodee are the two best for sure. You can also be picking up Chompy uh, just to be doing the carp because you'll have some vitality charges going on, synergy going on, and this helps you draw through your deck faster, uh, which is kind of what we want to be doing as a support, is getting to the, the cards that matter to help our team out. Uh, yeah, now let's talk about unlocking the Bree. So to unlock Bree, she, the start of the quest is in the ice zone. I don't have a map. To, to look at here uh you just go to the ice biome in act two or three it doesn't matter which order uh you go pick up her quest and she sends you to the act four in act four you got to get up to the top floor uh and on the top floor you got to go north to the garden there should be a, a a question mark there if there's not you just got to go to the north path go to the garden there'll be an option to say plant the seed because in the ice biome she'll say hey take the seed go find somewhere to plant it and then you go to act four and you plant it and uh, that's how to unlock her team synergy. Oh, that's what it was. I'm supposed to be talking about this team comp. So for this team, uh, Heiner is taking over the role of vulnerable applier and um, a little bit of the speed manipulation between Heiner and Bree. Uh, they are my my vulnerable and my survival and my speed manipulation. Gustav is also picking up on the speed manipulation. So Bree here really like Heiner's covering some of the vulnerable Gustav's covering some of the, some of the speed. So Bree's just really relying on dumping into this sharp charges and making sure powerful is on Andrin as needed. Gustav here is doing the bless machine and the sharp machine. This team comps very nice because of the synergy of since these three together are all taking on like each of them is half of one job. If one fails to draw the correct cards, oh I didn't do this deck, the correct cards that the um the other didn't. I can speak straight. I can't I can't click and, and speak at the same time apparently. So because they're overlapping, they can cover for each other when they don't draw the cards that you're expecting. And so that helps for the consistency of the play pattern of each each fight because you don't have to rely on a single person to get one job done. Yes, that's what I tried to say. Might have to take out this team synergy part, guys, because it is really messing with my brain. All right, and other team synergies. 
So because Bree is a vulnerable and like she's got the, all these she's got all these intimidates and we're adding more intimidates and she's got the shout. So anyone that needs powerful and anyone that needs either uh sight or mark, everyone needs vulnerable at some point. Uh but sight and mark and powerful are the other things that the support brings to the table. So those that can't maintain their own powerful, which are sometimes mages, will want it. Uh, both mages and priests suffer from the ability that they don't... Like, there's a lot of characters. The only people that really maintain their powerful are people that have things like momentum, um, where they, they gain it based on their attacks or their talents. Because a lot of these, the, the cards that used to apply powerful consistently have been nerfed. Uh, so uh, any DPS where you're looking at their deck and you're like, man, I just can't, uh, I can't maintain powerful unless I get an item. Or because, say, the item, items that you want for the, the hero, like say Wilbur, I want the, uh, the, I can't pick up the, the armor that does powerful because I need something else from that fight. And I want to pick up the crown that, that does lightning, so I can't pick up the powerful ring. So in that case, Wilbur is kind of lacking of like, hey, I can't maintain powerful on myself, so I have him stuck going the, the, the weaker, the weaker powerful uh, perk instead of the the ten charges and refreshes every turn, because Wilbur can't maintain ten stacks every turn because he's not picking up items to do it and he can't do it with cards. So Bree can step in and be like, hey, I got gotcha. you. You can have ten powerful for me every time because I'm just going to cast two battle shouts, and you will always be max powerful. So that would be a good place to set Bree in just for on the stands of stance or the the grounds of being a powerful applicator. Uh, otherwise, the the vulnerable the intimidates do a lot of sight and mark. So Sylvie requires sight, and requires mark. Grookly requires mark. Uh, sight Nez requires sight. So of those. DPS, that's a good reason to bring Bree along. Nezglick needs it for the healing, the other one's for their damage. Uh, and then what else is Bree bringing to the table? Just uh, someone that can cast a couple of big flashy cards in the late game and be very consistent in the early game. So uh, I think that covers all the synergies. There's not, uh, we're not filling Shorn in for any sort of healing. We're doing a little bit of healing in the late game, not enough to really rely on. And we are doing a little bit of a block in the early game, which is very nice and kind of help you get through the, the early game. So I'd say Bree also helps out anyone that struggles in the first act or two because Bree doesn't take long to come online as a very consistent uh, support. So like the Wilbers of the world that are relying on that, waiting until they get their trident to be super effective or they can craft rare cards. So Bree is a good uh, support for that reason on those team comps as well. All right, that's all I got. Uh, some of this was a little breezy and rough. Uh, let me know how I did and what you liked. And if you'd like to support me directly, the, currently the best way to do that is tip. That's a little heart icon right below the screen and above the comments. There will eventually be a membership thing. Please let me know in the comments what you would like to see from a membership program. YouTube does offer uh, memberships. It'll probably be something like, hey, a dollar a month. That's uh, It's kind of like you know the equivalent of Patreon if you're used to that. Uh, and uh, what you'd expect to see from said support. And I will catch you later. Peace.